Welcome to a 2v2 on Rails and Metal. This game is going to be Maxentius, Thialius, Von Franken, and Bongwater. Versus Kratz and 40 Cake, who I actually cast quite recently. Both subs. Both my loyal, loyal, wonderful subs. And apparently this time they're on a team with each other rather than against each other in a wacky custom game. We're actually going to be doing it looks like a 2v2 uh, auto match as far as I can tell. So we're going to see elite troops and Ostrupin immediately chosen by the Axis in the southwest and Kratz and 40k going with guard motor, advanced warfare, shock motor, shock rifle, tank hunter, and terror tactics. So they are double Soviets. Came to this game to win as far as I can tell. None of this U.S. forces nonsense. Conscripts making their way. Across the right side, these conscripts taking control of the center. Combat engineers and conscripts over here on the left. A squad of conscripts making its way over here as well. Io somehow managed to get into extremely close range on those conscripts, doing pretty okay in the beginning of this engagement, but as they start dropping models, they're gonna fall behind. They do manage to take out three conscripts before being forced to retreat. Though the conscripts actually retreat first. <laughs> That's probably the best I've ever seen Pios do against conscripts. You don't normally manage to get into close range that quickly. Good job, Pios. Off to a pretty good start right there. And it looks like the center victory point is going to go to the Soviets regardless. And over here on the right side, Ostrupin are making their way up with MG42 support. There's two Ostrupin, one MG, one Grenadier squad on the field now. Should probably be able to hold this line, especially with one conscript squad already being forced to retreat and with access to this defensive building. Don't think the Soviets are very likely to be able to overwhelm this fuel point here in the early game. Over here on the left side, MG42 setting up to counter conscripts and combat engineers making their way towards the munitions. Similarly, it doesn't look like the Ostar are going to be able to punch through this and make it up to the left side fuel. 40 Cake is apparently amused. Are these conscripts stuck? I think they might be stuck. I think if you vault this particular segment of fence, you can't move. <laughs> he has to vault again to escape. And then 40k's conscripts will get away very narrowly right there. Over here on the left side. Lots of Soviet infantry from both players. In fact, looks like it uh, threatens to overwhelm this small Oster force. Machine gun needs to set up to try and save the day here if possible, but I don't know if it's going to be possible to stop this many conscripts. This one running into point-blank range right in front of that machine gun will get gunned down very quickly, though. Lay retreat! No! There they go. The rest of this force trying to get outside the machine gun's arc of fire. Nothing suppressed yet. It's all just making a frontal assault, though, but it doesn't matter. It's just too much, and everything is going to be forced to make a retreat right here since that initial machine gun burst was... Sadly, unable to suppress this blob. Everything is forced off the field. But pretty good trade for Bongwater, honestly. All things considered, he lost no full squads right there and did take out a full squad of conscripts. Unfortunately, it does mean that the Oster will lose access to the left side munitions point. But over here on the right, resource situation looks pretty okay. Unfortunately, the Soviets have both munitions, so the Oster LMG production and teller mines and all, all that good stuff is going to be slowed down. But we will see a teller mine, S mine field. Some other defenses being thrown up here on the right side. One conscript squad jumping into the strategic point over here, bringing that pyro squad down kind of low. Apparently he's going to plant that mine despite, I mean, his opponent sees it. <laughs> Maybe he's just not monitoring the engagement. He just wasn't watching that. Pyos get wiped unmonitored by those conscripts. Should probably cancel that. That's 50 munitions. He should probably just try and get back and, and turn into an LMG or something. 40 cake has locked in tank hunter tactics. So she's probably going to be spamming some, some pretty serious PTRS blobs. <laughs> and she's also gone tier 2 into a field gun, getting that a little early. I think 5 minutes might be a little too early to get a, be worrying about a field gun, especially against Ostrupin. But, I don't know. Alright. Field gun out. Maybe she'll, she's just planning to use the high explosive barrage. The Soviet waves of infantry are now rotating towards the right side to try and overwhelm this defense. There's one machine gun and three squads of infantry set up in cover. Could prove difficult to, to crack if they don't have any Molotovs, which I don't think either Soviet player does. But the Grenadier squad in this building is falling quite low and he's just going to get brute forced out by sheer numbers. 
Conscripts move to take control of the structure and start firing on the Ostrubin in this trench. There is an Oster mortar set up over here, firing on uh, Soviet infantry, making its way down the right side. And meanwhile, on the left, nothing really has been left to defend over here except for one combat engineer squad to provide vision of the trench should a plucky squad of grenadiers think to jump inside and explode. Apparently, Kratz doesn't quite feel confident detonating that. Uh, he probably wouldn't get the full squad. I don't know, it's kind of hard to tell. It looks like a wipe, but I, I I can't tell. I'm not sure. Bunker going up right there. Okay, it is a wipe. Apparently he was like, eh, it looks like a wipe. <laughs> and it is. Grenadier squad will go down to that demo charge. Combat engineers will be forced to retreat, though, and the remaining squads are going to make their way up the left side to get control of this territory. One last squad of conscripts jumping into this building. This shed is not much of a anything. I don't think there are any south-facing windows, in fact. No, only north-facing. So this is just a death trap for those conscripts. They won't be able to do anything there. Really no reason to put conscripts in that building. 40 kick will leave. This squad also going to be forced to retreat right here. And there's the half-track. Half-track on the field to allow for forward reinforcement of all of these various squads. Try and continue holding the line and keep that fuel coming in for the Ostera as they make their way up to their slightly more dangerous units. Conscripts engaging here in the middle against Grenadiers working on the center victory point. Should be able to push them away. There's also a demo charge in the area. Should a squad be unfortunate enough, try and stand right there. Capture the point. AT gun heading left, completely unsupported. <laughs> that's that's a bit of a dangerous manu maneuver. It's in very real danger of being cleared just by these pyos, I think. Uh oh. Here it comes. And then there's gonna be a wipe on at least. Oh man, that could have been two wipes. No vision though. No vision, fortunately, for bong water right there. These two squads making their way towards the right side munitions point. Combat engineers are going to try and pull back to safety. S mines going down here in the road. There's a heavy mortar on the field here. Well, it's getting a little too close to these Grens. Realizes his mistake. Starts to pull him back to safety. He's also got a squad of guards on the field now. Soviets are falling behind a little bit. Fortunately, the Oster have been a little slow to get the left side fuel capped. One squad of Grens making its way over there to do so now. These Grenadiers falling low in red cover, not being monitored. Might get wiped. Where's the retreat? That is a late retreat. I can't believe that squad's getting away alive right now. Is he really going to stick around in this red cover to get that munitions point? It's not going to happen. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There is a huge PTRS blob shooting at your Grens in red cover. You should retreat. The munitions are not worth it. Nothing is worth that. <sighs> Mine here in the retreat path. The squad does not get wiped right there. There is an Oster mortar shooting at these blobs. Doing what it can. T70 on the field for 40 cake as well. Molotov plus T-70 fire will convince that machine gun to retreat and the mortar will probably be next. This should help the Soviets get a little bit of map control back. In fact, the machine gun gets wiped right there. Grenadier's trying to throw a Faust on this T-70. May get wiped as a result of that decision. Not quite. Barely gets away. Meanwhile, here in the middle, guards have stolen that machine gun. Probably could have let one of these conscript squads steal that and guards could have stayed on the battlefield, but alright. BTRS is forced to retreat from that mortar and continue their advance down the left side, maybe towards the cutoff to blow up some caches while Lumpy does back capping here. There are two bunkers up, one machine gun bunker there, one there. If the PTRS blobs flank either of those, they'll have they'll blow them up very quickly. Plus there's a field gun out, so lots of bunker counters on the field here for 40 cake. She continues her advance across the left. Meanwhile on the right, Ostrupin continue to defend. A couple squads poking. The right side, we'll find it undefended, should be able to get another strategic point captured. Although the T-70 is an ever-present threat, doesn't need repairs to its engines. ETRS blob working on the bunker, we'll destroy it very soon. 
even frontally, it does not even matter. There it goes. One squad is forced to retreat. No big deal though. Over here on the right side, artillery field officer plus Panzer Grenz will force a retreat from the heavy mortar. So that uh, that definitely helps. But the T-70 is about to be fully repaired. Neither of these squads have any anti-tank utility. We have been assigned fresh panzer grenadiers. Although it looks like that field gun might get cleared. It's in no real danger of being stolen. Waiting? Wow, is he really going to try this deal with that artillery field officer? That's... Alright. He's trying to get a shot off on the T-70 and will be successful in hitting it once, but it immediately gets cleared. I don't know if that manpower bleed was necessarily really worth it. It will force that T-70 back for some repairs, though. The uh, PTRS blobs, apparently... Wow, what happened? <laughs> Only two squads... I don't know what happened over here. I see a bunch of dead con... I see a lot of dead conscripts. Maybe they blobbed right into this machine gun? No? Rifle grenade, I guess. <laughs> Something catastrophic happened over here. There's a lot of dead conscripts. I missed it, though. Maybe, like, a miracle mortar hit or something. <laughs> Whatever it was, 40k, forced to retreat. We'll be uh, healing and reinforcing here in the base for a little while, and a Panzer IV is on the field from Bongwater, who's slowly making his way towards Tiger Ace. Pretty decent chance of him making it, I think. Oster map control has been pretty okay. This map clock control has been pretty good, too. They actually have a 100 VP lead. So. Oh, S mines. Okay. That explains it, then. Couple conscripts from... Kratz making their way over here to try and push away the Grenadiers right there. Panzer IV is the latest threat that they're going to have to deal with. Field gun's been recruited right there though. So that should uh, that should help. Half track is reinforcing some squads here in the back and the fortifications are getting pretty serious over here. Panzer Grenz in trenches, look at that. <laughs> Interesting. This could prove very difficult to overwhelm later in the game, but the fact that he has so many forces tied up over here on the on the right side means that his opponent, his teammate, stands basically no chance of winning against the double team or for the left, which is on its way very hard. I don't think that this tiny army is going to be able to take on five PTRS conscripts plus everything that Kratz is sending into this engagement. Panzer IV doing what it can, but it's already fallen down to half health from AT gun fire. It's very late to react. It will pop smoke though. It should be able to get uh, get to safety. But the remaining infantry in this engagement obviously cannot take on this glorious blob. Grenadier is getting sniped so quick. <laughs> if he had waited even a second longer to retreat that, I'm pretty sure it was just going to get insta-wiped. Good thing the Germans don't have demo charges, because that is just asking for it. <laughs> Austrian in production. Hopefully that'll help tame this blob a little bit. Over here on the right side. What is that, a stolen MG42? Yes. Working on these squads. Artillery field officer deploys smoke to allow the uh, these Panzer Grenadiers to advance with half-track support. I don't know what his plan is to, uh, to get that machine gun out of that building, though. The smoke will at least get him this munitions point decapped, I guess. Other than that, though, I, I don't know. Soviets have retaken full control of the left side, and the T-70 has also been fully repaired, making its way back into the engagement. T-34 on the field as well. Looks like the Soviets might be thinking about trying to crack this defense with that many forces. It might be possible. The machine gun in this trench is, and the half-track are the two biggest concerns. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector. 
and with this sheer volume of Soviet forces, you could probably manage it. Heavy mortar especially, softening things up. Looks like they would rather continue to hold the line over here on the left side, though. Kratz sending his infantry in against the machine gun and grenadiers right here. Starts tossing a few Molotovs to force retreats and repositioning. I don't think there's a half-track over here for reinforcement, and field gunshots on that Panzer IV are bringing it dangerously low. One hit from being destroyed, why would it not kite? There's the smoke, late reaction to that AT gun fire, but it is going to try and pull back to safety. Kratz conscripts Urang into close range against it, will toss the AT grenade, and it penetrates. Panzer IV has damaged engine and must pull all the way back to safety. Out of this engagement if it doesn't want to be sniped by a PTRS and destroyed. T-34 going in hard on the Ostwind, try and force it to retreat. If it continues its advance to hunt down that Panzer IV, it could destroy it unopposed, and it may do so. Currently, infantry are working on getting control of the victory point back, and over here on the right side, a few squads have been forced out of the engagement for reinforcement by the half track. And there's another Panzer IV on the field here from Maxentius as well. That Oster mortar could do serious damage to this if it doesn't spread out a little. <laughs> spread out a little bit, jeez. Minesweeper upgraded on some combat engineers heading right. They will be able to clean up an S mine field and teller mines, which apparently, somehow, at some point, those teller mines completed. <laughs> Our opponents are seizing the sector. Enemy forces are securing our territory. That squad has to retreat. PTRS blob over here on the left side. We'll move to engage against some stuff. <laughs> no, it won't. <laughs> Pulling back, apparently. Panzer IV is going to peek. We'll encounter that mortar. T7 has to pull away to safety. Apparently no field gun in the area to support, I don't think. Although there is an SU-85 on the field, so that'll definitely be a useful tool against the uh, Panzer IVs. Longwater still has six CPs to go before making it to uh, Tiger Ace, and apparently the CP difference here is quite drastic. <laughs> Maxentius has been playing so defensively that he's barely engaged at all. He peaks uh, occasionally with like two or three units trying to poke the territory and look for opportunities, but obviously his engagements have not been nearly as lethal as his teammates, and this move with his Panzer IV might cost him his tank. There it goes, T-34 just guns it down at close range with SU-85 support. So that's not good. Of course, that the lethality of that engagement brought him back up in CPs a little bit. At least he's not ridiculously behind anymore. Panzer 4 has to pull back a little bit from that conscript squad, and it is marked, so that one will go down even faster if it chooses to continue engaging. Over here on the left side, there's nothing left defending except for an unsupported field gun, but there are uh, a few Soviet vehicles in the area that can be dedicated to an engagement if necessary. Ostwind is mostly repaired. Panzer 4 is about to be fully repaired. Once those make it back to the front line, might be an opportunity for Bongwater to get some territory captured over here on the left. Clock control is still quite good for the Oster, though. Still have a, about an 80 point lead. Decent, decent chance that they could uh, take this game. If that landed on that, I would have laughed. <laughs> Panzer IV pulling back a little bit from the conscripts over here on the left side. Apparently an anti-tank bomb strike just got dropped right there, and that wasn't really anywhere close to hitting that Panzer IV though. Double Panzer IV is engaging against the PTRS blob over here. I'm not sure what they're gonna fire at first. It looks like they're gonna try and snipe the Grens rather than the tanks. They're getting bled hard in this engagement by Panzer IV fire, and they will also get suppressed by an MG42 in the area. Quite a few squads being forced to retreat. This 
push doesn't seem to be going very well. There's just too much stuff available for this engagement. T-34 going in pretty hard in the front with SU-85 and field gun support in the back. Trying to do what they can to these Axis tanks, but so far most shots are missing or bouncing. SU-85 gets into close range and one Panzer IV is quite close to going down. Lots of smoke being deployed in this engagement to try and keep those tanks alive. So far it looks like they'll be okay and the Soviets have successfully overwhelmed this defense. A lot of conscripts forced to retreat, but it was just too much. Be brave, comrades. And the left side victory point will fall back into Soviet control. The clock will continue ticking against the Oster, and they'll have to think about setting up an even stronger defense, apparently, to be able to survive these waves. Panzer IV being repaired and back. This Panzer IV also needs some repairs, but I don't think any high-value Axis targets were destroyed during that engagement. All tanks still alive. The guards are making their way over here towards the right side to start getting control of the VP. Heavy mortars trying to soften up these, these blobs. So far it doesn't look like it's hit anything. The guards are again trapped in this... They have to vault the fence. Vault! Vault! Stop spanning retreat! Vault the fence! Rats, please! If you vault this fence, apparently you cannot move. You have to vault back over it to be able to save the retreat. Fun fact! T-34 is engaging against Grenadiers over here on the left side. It's not a bug! I mean, you might argue that it's bad map design. But, I mean, <laughs> it was possible to save that squad. T-34 goes down after taking engine damage to a Panzer Shrek blob right there. Managed to brute force it to death. Panzer Shrek fire before retreating with uh, minimal manpower bleed. Only one of the squad members there goes down. The rest should be able to heal just fine. Mortar fire destroys another demo charge there in the middle. Panzer fours, two Panzer fours now, moving their way up the left. Not a whole lot of munitions being redistributed here by the Ostrupin player either, so he's probably not planning on spamming railway artillery too hard. He's managed to get out two medium tanks in 23 minutes. So. Spending most of his fuel on tanks rather than munitions transfer. Moving up to engage against these this conscript blob over here on the left. Not fire a volley of PTRSs at that at either of those tanks, rather just pulling back to safety for now, not wanting to take too much mortar fire. Or Panzer IV fire. Waiting for her teammate, I guess, before committing to a big engagement. There's another T-34 on the field now, so two T-34s plus the half track plus T-70. The half track also affording 40 cake forward reinforcement. Which she doesn't need that badly. Just a couple losses need to be replaced. Combat engineers are going to retreat for some reason. Maybe they're going to build uh, tier four. I don't know. <laughs> Pretty quiet right now. Two squads of grenadiers making their way into the left side VP. They're probably maybe going to explode. Not quite. T-34s move up a little bit, start engaging against an MG-42 over there. The PTRS blobs uh, nails a couple of grenadiers right there. They'll retreat. 
Second squad also going to retreat. They're all standing on top of a demo charge. Oh god, what if a mortar lands on that or something? That is so asking for it. Okay. She's actually spreading out a little. <laughs> Panther on the field for Bongwater, who has gone tier 3 and tier 4. Axis fuel control has been pretty okay this game, apparently. At 25 minutes, there's two Panther 4s, Panther, Austin, etc. running around, so in pretty okay shape. Bongwater will also be up to the 15 CPs he needs for the Tiger Ace quite soon, at which point the Soviets may struggle a little bit to keep this sheer volume of most here tanks at bay. T-70 falling low will be the first to go down during this. Field gun and SU-85 bringing Ostwind low and it's trying to pull back to safety. Anti-tank bomb strike is off target and doesn't really hit anything. Ostwind will get back. Panzer IV will, will also get back. T-70 and T-34 traded in exchange. Good engagement for the Axis right there. Went very well. Did not lose any armor. Destroyed two vehicles on the opponent's end of things. T-3485 is destroying some cover here. We're circling back towards the middle. I still don't think a single attempt has really, not a, not a really legitimate attempt has been made at taking control of the right side, other than heavy mortar bombardment for pretty much the entire game. We're going to see uh, railway artillery dropped on that field gun right there, which is not reacting in any way during this. 34 and SU-85 will successfully destroy that Panther, but the railway artillery will bring that field gun low. It didn't quite hit anything yet. T-34 has to pull back to safety. Is that blob really walking into this? Fortunately, it's scattered left instead of right. This is this could be devastating. I really hope the third shell doesn't land right on top of that. Oh god. Here it comes. Oh! <laughs> Oh my god, the carnage. Wow, those squads are all so lucky to be getting away with just one man remaining. <laughs> Party cake, please. Please don't blob into railway artillery. <laughs> wow. Well, That was spectacular. So many corpses. But, Panther goes down during that engagement. Panzer IV also went down during that engagement. Field gun and SU-85 fire in, uh, took their toll as well. So I wouldn't necessarily say that engagement went in anybody's favor. None of those construct squads got wiped, and 40 Cake actually has a lot of manpower floating that she can use to reinforce them all and get them back to the front line. Panzer Shrek volley right there destroys another T-34. Field gun gets cleared. Grenadiers have to retreat. Decent quantity of Axis forces available, and it looks like Bongwater may not even be intending to go Tiger Ace because he's not floating manpower. He continues to produce Tier 4 units. Getting a Panzerwerfer out now to try and punish that, uh, try and punish that Conscript Blob. Might be a decent chance, decent chance of that Panzerwerfer performing well this game if he can keep it alive against against this type of behavior. First barrage about to hit the field now. Looks like it's pretty off target though. Kills one conscript. I think he aimed it a little bit wrong. So we'll see. We'll see if that thing is able to perform this game. Ooh. Panzer IV is doing pretty good damage during this. We'll force a retreat from uh, a couple squads right there. Over here on the left, Combat Engineer is grabbing the uh, VP and these six squads. Making their way towards the right side. Battlefield's kind of quiet again. Blob is making its way towards the right side. That's 
squad of Grenadiers is going to retreat. We're on the left, Pyo is getting control of the victory point. The Ostia do have victory point control right now, and their lead will start to grow again. Clock pretty even at 300 VPs for both sides. A couple conscripts go down to Panzer IV, fire there in the middle, and they're just going to pull back towards the half track for reinforcement for now. 2T3485s make their way into the center VP to try and maybe push away a couple of team weapons here. Another rifle grenade on the heavy mortar right there. Panzerwerfer Barrage coming down on something. On the tanks. And it's not going to really do anything. So far that Panzerwerfer hasn't quite managed to nail this. So it hasn't really done anything yet. Panzer IV has continued to defend here in the middle. AT gun and MG42 deployed to this area as well. Ostair currently have both of the flank victory points and the center VPs uncontested. MG element ready. Here comes another railway artillery in the center victory point. 40k will react this time and get to safety away from that. And it looks like that blob is going to be fine this time. Apparently she doesn't want to tank another one of those shells. I, I think it would be kind of cool if the railway artillery crater gave green cover. It's like demo charge sized, right? Pretty big explosion. Maybe that would be kind of lame though if there was just green cover everywhere after railway artillery. Yellow cover in all the ca in, in, uh, on the entire map is already makes it makes infantry like oddly durable the longer the game goes. <laughs> Blob will move into the center of victory point after the artillery clears. Sniping grenadiers left and right, that squad immediately forced to retreat. Panzer IV. Blob making its way towards the middle to engage against these infantry. Panzerwerfer for coming down. This one could be pretty good if it connects nicely. Oh, that was a pretty good stray rocket up there, but no wipes, no wipes. Again, he should have maybe put, aimed it a little further back. Just didn't quite place it right. Big engagement between T-34s and Panzer IVs here on the road. Panzer IVs, a couple shots are bouncing. Panzer Faust to damage the engine, but they're going to disengage after one of them falls a little bit too low. SU-85 is also available to try and punish them from the north, but it's not going to chase any further. Panzer Shrek blob moving up into the center of VP to try and take out maybe that SU-85 if they can find an opportunity. But the conscript blob is still on the battlefield and still quite large and strong and reinforcing by that half track it means that it's every time it gets softened up a little bit by indirect fire just pulls back reinforces and then moves to re-engage elsewhere on the battlefield but fortunately the axes have continued to do an excellent job of maintaining clock control and keep that clock ticking in their favor and they're about to have a, another hundred victory point lead oh jeez oh my god those s mines 40 cake! <laughs> if Blob, is she intentionally sweeping an S mine field with conscript Blob? I think so! <laughs> Fresh conscripts alive. Railway artillery deployed onto the left side VP. <laughs> Will prompt her to retreat. Although she just lost like 30 conscripts or something, <laughs> just walking through an S mine field. <laughs> Oh my god, that friendly fire! <laughs> he just drove that Ostwin right into railway artillery and got nailed. Wow, that almost killed it. That was almost a one-shot. That could have been bad. <laughs> Last shell clips those guards a little bit. Squad of conscripts will move into the capture circle to get it under control. Meanwhile, over here on the right, squad of conscripts gets wiped by flame projectors. Ostair will maintain control of the right side VP. Arc is currently stopped. Kratz is floating like crazy. Is he pop capped? A little. Yeah, he doesn't quite have what he needs to, to call in the next set. There he goes. Needs 10 more fuel, he's gonna call that in even after calling that in. That'll bring him up to about 100 pop cap. So he just wants the tanks rather than further infantry. And once he has four T-34s on the field, there's a pretty decent chance of being over to uh, being able to overwhelm one of these 
one of these victory points. Not that much that can defend against four T-34s here on the left. There is a fresh panther though in addition to this AT gun, but it's going down quick to SU-85 fire. What is it doing? Oh geez, that's going to go down if it doesn't pull back right now. I'm not sure if he was even monitoring that engagement. Vet 3 SU-85 shooting that panther up without thinking about it. PTRS blob moving up over here on the right side is annihilating those Ostrupen, which have finally left their defensive trench over there on the right and I don't think are being monitored. One squad goes down immediately. Railway artillery is falling here, but I think the blob is going to get to safety. It takes it quite a while to land. 40k is just going to move out of the smoke and be fine. But the half track has been destroyed by Panzer Shrek blob over here. That, wow, that squad just melted so quick to PTRS fire. That one almost didn't get away either. Jeez. And there goes another full squad not being monitored. PTRS blob just cleaning up targets left and right. Uncountered by railway artillery thus far. Panzerwerfer is not available to fire either. His last barrage must have been pretty off target. The Austrian trying to beat this with mortar support. Quite a few conscripts go down there to that stray mortar and Austrian fire. And they are all going to retreat all the way back to base once again. Fresh half track being fielded by 40k to allow her forward reinforcement. And that's uh, T3485 is going to pull back a little bit for repairs here in the north. A lot of vehicles, in fact, being repaired here in the north. In the, SU the VET-3 SU-85, which has been instrumental in keeping the Axis armor at bay. With that off the field, the Panzer Force have a lot more room to maneuver. Is ready for action. The Axis still have very good clock control, and it's probably going to come down to the next set of T-3485s to try and turn this game around. Currently two popcap to field it, though. The SU-85 is a pretty decent chunk of popcap, plus this infantry core. Perhaps might be waiting for this squad or this force to fall low or get wiped a little bit before he purchases that second set. Has to manage his pop cap carefully and think about exactly what uh, what composition is going to help him trade the most cost effectively. If he sacrifices too much infantry for tanks, he may not have the capping power he needs. Then again, in theory, this this composition should give them all the capping power they need. <laughs> but if it continues to move as one one blob, I guess maybe not. Conscripts making their way towards the center VP to get it captured. And these two squads are making their way towards the left side strategic point. Two squads of grenadiers grabbing the left side fuel. Only 100 points left for the Soviets. Panzerwerfer is going to try and slow this capture attempt for the center VP. Or no. Fuel. Or this left side VP. Looks like it was off target. Conscripts managed to dodge. Ostrom is available to start bleeding these guards. It's going down quick. And there's the retreat. T-34 is moved to try and punish. With two SU-85 supporting that Ostrom could definitely go down. Pop smoke to get back to safety and the Panzer moves up to absorb fire in its place. It's going down very quickly as well. Also will pop smoke to try and get to safety. This AT gun overextending through the smoke is probably going to get wiped. A couple squads moving into the center victory point to try and punish if possible. Austrian and Panther both have to pull very far back for repairs. Panzerwerfer might be a little bit exposed to those T-34s as well. Panzer Shrek Blob arrives to support in this engagement, starts nailing those T-34s from the rear. They're gonna stop here for a second and start maybe bunker busting a little bit or just try and get to safety. Grenadier's trying to get in range for a Panzer Faust. Will not quite get it off. Panzer Shrek Blob gets another volley off on that T-34. Most shots miss, unfortunately. And there's the fresh set. Three T-34s out of four originally fielded now on the field. Kratz should maybe be able to utilize them to some effect against the Austere Force moving for the center VP. Panzer Shrek Blob continues to be a serious problem, though. That one goes down low. Panzer Force will expose themselves to the Vet 3 SU-85, getting brought down very quick by those tank destroyers. That one gets destroyed almost immediately. The other two don't feel comfortable continuing that engagement. We'll try and pull back to safety. The Panzer Shrek Blob also pulling back a little bit. I don't know what that maneuver was. That Panzer Force goes down easily to the fresh set. That will reduce Maxentius to only one tank remaining and Bongwater down also to just his one Panther and almost destroyed Ostwind. 
Railway artillery is being deployed somewhere here in the center victory point, apparently. It's not really going to hit anything where it just got deployed. The PTRS blob is making its way up the left side to try and overwhelm everything, and the T-34s will locate and destroy the Panzerwerfer. Panzerwerfer goes down, and they'll pull back through the smoke away from the AT gun and Panther right there, although they may, may lose this T-34 going down pretty quickly is destroyed, plus Panzer IV fire, plus AT gun and Panther fire. Both of these T-34s look like they're going to get destroyed here. And down they go. Only one T-34 remaining, plus one SU-85. Heavy losses on both sides of this engagement, but the PTRS blob is still alive and well and doing what it can to hold the line while the center and left side victory points get recaptured for the Soviets with only 74 points currently remaining. Not very many blob counters left for the for the access to, to punish this, except for a mortar. Railway artillery obviously is not working. Wow, 40k just spent like probably almost 100 munitions on that raw. But she will get clear of the uh, of the railway artillery with that. Panzer Shrek volley plus AT gun fire on an overextended SU-85 right there. That goes down easily to mass access firepower. The clock briefly in Allied control, but a lot of high priority Allied targets are being destroyed this game. Kratz will not have the fuel for another set of C-34s anytime soon and should probably start spending that manpower float on infantry instead. Just maybe guard spam or conscripts or whatever, anything. Can't. I don't think that he can hold this line with only... 1600 manpower float if all of his tanks get destroyed. Only 60 of 100 pop cap is not a very good size army to be working with this late in the game. Panzer IVs going in very aggressively against the PTRS blob. Will pick up another uh, T-34 right there. This one is about to get destroyed. Railway artillery being dropped on the blob, which was a little bit late to react, by the way, but it looks like they're gonna get clear because it just takes forever to land, basically. The Panzer IV gets stolen and is going to try and pull back to safety right there. Nothing available for the Axis to destroy that thing. And the Blob is going to continue defending the center victory point and uh, melting infantry squads even in range will be forced to retreat right there. Railway artillery falling in the area doesn't hit anything again. So far this game, a lot of railway artillery has just missed. That's a lot of munitions. It's 200 every single time that gets deployed. Let's try and find better opportunities to use that. All it really does is force the blob to move around. It doesn't actually kill anything. These two tanks on the right side are forced to pull back to safety. Kratz is making his way up to 2,000 manpower at 45 of 100 pop cap. Why would he not replace his losses here? It doesn't make any sense. Maybe he just feels that anything other than T-34s at this point of the game is useless? I don't know. He could at least spend it on fuel caches if, he, if all he wants to make are tanks from this point forward. New Panther on the field, making its way to the front line. And I'm pretty sure Bongwater has no intention of building a Tiger Ace. The only uh, doctrinal features he's used in fact this game are his um, Panzer Tactician Smoke. And maybe troop training. I He's probably popped this. That's probably why he picked this commander. He has a lot of Vet 3 stuff, so pretty decent likelihood of that. But no Tiger Ace. Interesting to use elite troops and not field the Tiger Ace. Not that I blame him, I, I think the economic drain from the Tiger Ace, especially in a game of this length, can be quite crippling. Although a Tiger Ace would have been a nice thing to have against a PTRS blob. I think that would have been a very good tool for punishing that. More railway artillery being deployed. Or no, Panzerwerfer Barrage. 
slightly off target to hit that blob again, unfortunately. Ooh, nice mortar hit, though, and the entire blob is getting suppressed here. Panther needs to pull back to safety. SU-85 takes Panzerfaust from the Ostrupen right there, and two Panzer IVs are making their way up the right flank. The SU-85s will turn to fire on them and bring them both quite low. They are pulling back to safety now. PTRS blob continues roaming across the left, trying to split up a little bit under heavy fire from this MG-42, suppressing them. Austin moves up to try and push away a couple squads. It's only got 19 kills. It's not performing that well this game, honestly. MG-42 is up to Vet-3. Whoa. <laughs> That plane crash. <laughs> blob, blob capping the left side. VP does get it under control though. And the stolen Panzer IV is being repaired here in the back. Bach is ticking against the Allies. They have only 27 points remaining. Struggling to get anything under control. Kratz up to 2,000 manpower float. Why not make units? We must hold the enemy. We are down to our last 25 points. That makes sense. Spam anything. Does not matter what it is. <laughs> Railway artillery being deployed to the center of VP to slow the capture of this sector. <laughs> Gambled and lost. Gambled and lost on that one. Although, I don't think it was necessary to make the attempt with three full squads. Only 12 points left for the Allies. Another SU-85 just got cleaned up right there by peaking Panzer IVs. I think this failure to spend resources is going to cost the Allies the game, not to mention a, a couple good railway artillery hits. Railway artillery is good at denying uh, denying territory for a, like a few extra precious seconds in a situation like this. That's one thing it's nice for. There it is. GG's being exchanged. The Allies can't recover. Saw some interesting things this game. <laughs> Massive PCRS blobbing, fortunately, did not work, even against an Ostrupen uh, build. Saw some pretty fun, pretty good railway artillery shots. <laughs> so, a few things that I think that both both sides could have done better. I kind of actually liked the, um, oh, there's the Tiger Ace. The decision to delay the Tiger Ace until way late into the game, because getting it too early, I think, is is a very expensive economic thing if you don't think that you're in a position where you can win immediately maybe it's best to hold off on that and uh, I think that Maxentius has probably played a little too passively over here on the right side dedicating most of his pop cap for the entire game just to defending on the one hand is good because it means that they have this guaranteed resource income but at the same time you could tell that his teammate was really struggling and it caused the game to last for quite a while because he didn't have any support and he was getting double teamed repeatedly by this giant blob Pretty cool tank engagements from both sides, I would say. Obviously, Kratz needed to spend his resources here by the end of the game, and 40 Cake, I think, needs to uh, try and tone down the blobbing a little if she doesn't want to get nailed by artillery and suppression. But I did like the usage of the uh, forward half-track reinforced point. So, GG. Axis wins.